Do you accept your existence on the planet with a certain peace of mind? Well, I accept my existence. Um, I don't accept the situation that I find myself in on this planet now. I think that's a real struggle. The situation being? That I live in a culture which is uh, permeated by dominance and oppression. Uh, What's up, guys? This is the Army Surplus Tent Stove Face-Off. On the right, you have the Yukon M1950 from the Korean era up to the early 90s I suppose or the mid 80s and on the right you have the Hunter SHA tent stove and they both got the st smokestack gang together you at this junction point and sharing one smokestack going up the hunter might show a little bit of uh, advantage because you have this choke point here which is sort of uh, a resistance to the smoke coming out so a little bit of heat I think will be trapped so the SHA might might exhibit a little bit more heat I don't don't know yet because I haven't tried both of them yet uh, the amber the ambient temperature outside is uh, 43 degrees inside here is uh, 50 degrees and this garage you have a big old heat sink here exposed to the outside aluminum no insulation at all the roof has no insulation and I got a half inch plywood separating me from the cruel cold world outside and we're gonna see the performance of both and see who heats up the best or what have you and I have a half kettle of water there for uh, testing the boiling properties of both units now for maintenance I'm gonna have to give it to the Yukon 1950 here's the burner unit for the 1950 there this here used to be part of the assembly but I guess during manufacturing when they press roll this out for the form here uh, you can see a little bit of separation on the seam there and when I blow through it I could feel air coming out that hole and I was afraid that if I put fuel through it uh, high vis viscosity fuel that it will leak through there and cause a fire hazard uh, so to repair it, a perfect example of, of the maintenance capabilities of the Yukon 1950, I just bought some quarter inch copper pipe, some compression fitting, and there were standard, uh, I don't know what you would call it, but but the, they mate as far as the, the screws and stuff. I mean, go to Home Depot, they, they might be able to help you out to, to get everything matching. But I was able to repair this unit despite having a bum part come come to me so that's that's one up on the Yukon 1950 also just the sim simplicity of it all fuel just drips into this uh, burner assembly there no place where you know could get clogged up and whatnot and uh, it's, it's just simple here's the other side of that a uh, quarter inch hole there for for dripping the uh, fuel simple painfully simple so that's it now the SHA heater here I was afraid to take this apart I was going to but I was afraid that if I take this apart just to show you guys I mean I got a dial here another dial here then the heat setting here if I pop things open I was afraid that it was gonna pop out like a like a switch uh, uh, a uh, Swiss uh, watch or something and I didn't want to go through that and pay for it so I just leave it be uh, doesn't burn gasoline I figure if I want to put uh, waste oil through this whether it be vegetable or motor oil or something like that is I think it's gonna clog up all the works inside I mean there's just too many orifices in there and it's too complicated not field repairable so uh, but let's see what the performance is going to be that be be like as far as the burner for the 
Yukon 1950, these cotter pins is, is what's holding this unit to, to that unit together, and that's it. So here's my test setup for the Yukon M1950. Drip pan in there to collect whatever dripping of fuel from the burner there that hasn't been burned yet. Copper quarter inch pipe modified. There's the uh, drip valve. Another piece of uh, quarter inch pipe. And instead of a uh, jerry can, I got this uh, sports water bottle here. One of those, the, those uh, aluminum kind. I uh, drilled through the bottom there, put a uh, quick disconnect, kind of like the ones that you see on. Uh, uh, air compressors compressors uh, by the way the uh, Yukon not the Yukon but the SHA 1950 that's the kind of configuration they have they have these quick disconnect uh, sort of valves there to make the connections I think that's a good system I don't know about leakage but it'll work for me here so that's the setup and in that canister there I have about a cup two cups and a half of fuel kerosene kerosene 1k and that's how I'm gonna start my test so far the temperature this is a infrared thermometer here roughly averaging 51 degrees stove pipe is 50 degrees around 52 degrees around there average that's my starting point okay let's get ready to rumble oh man that sounds cool sounds like a German World War II fighter jet taking off I could definitely fall asleep to that noise nice and soothing but uh, in all seriousness Let's see, on the side there, the temperature is around 550 average. Stove pipe, 308. On top of the stove, 420 something. Now, this is copper. So you figure that will get hot as well because copper is a good conductor of heat. Well, I can touch this just fine. It's cold right over here, so there's no danger of this thing overheating and causing this thing to go. There's my drip going. And I don't know if I have this in full blast or not, it's kind of hard to gauge. Uh, the fire went out on me once already, but uh, then I just heated it up again. for turned up the fuel a bit and I've been turning it up ever since. Ambient temperature of the garage. 56 on this side. On that side is uh, around 55. So you heated up the place okay. My uh, jerry rig uh, fuel can there is uh, holding up. It's not perfect but uh, it's, it's suitable. I mean, this works for me. I just wonder how long this is going to last with uh, two cups and a half worth of fuel. A little bit less than two cups and a half. So far, no leaks. And I'm okay. I got the fire stuff ready to go just in case. One, two. Uh, by the way, this uh, this uh, smokestack lid here, or, or the top of it, I had it on top of the roof and uh, it rusted on me. So. This is all steel and it, and it requires a lot of maintenance as far as rust. My SHA, just for being in this damp location in the garage, started to rust a little bit. So you're going to have to, you know, if you plan on making it a permanent installation, you know, poke your head in here once in a while just to see how the rust is doing on your equipment there and uh, take uh, preventive measures. So I'm going to go back to uh, cleaning my guns and stuff and, uh, and monitor the progress of this it is a lot of babysitting I mean just to see how the fuel is, is, is being used and stuff just to get it right you really got to watch it it started glowing red right there in that spot and uh, it bulged out just a little bit 
right now it's uh, eight, eight something there, and uh, it, the thing, this thing pegged out at a thousand degrees when it started glowing red there. So I had to turn back on the fuel a little bit. The tea, uh, the tea kettle is starting to uh, boil now, finally. But I think it's because it's warped on top and don't have that that uh, full contact with the with the bottom with the bottom plate there. It's around 500 degrees on this side. Stove pipe 310. Sweet sound of boiling water. So that was roughly a half hour into the uh, operation from, from cold start to now. Uh, average temperature, 850. Roughly 850, got up to 850. I, I guess that's the uh, temperature range you should keep this stove at if you have one of these. Stove pipe is uh, 300. Let me get this guy out of the way. Top of the stove is uh, 500 and around 500 degrees average. Ambient temperature of the uh, room now is 71. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. So it went from uh, let's see, 50 degrees to uh, 70 degrees now. 68 on this side. If I just pan around the place, I'm going into the radiant heat area here. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Uh, right there is my uh, doors, my aluminum doors, 68 way over there. So average 70 degrees in here. Oh, it's nice and warm back there. It just died on me. I got every bit of fuel. I even extended the uh, the hose here way up high and to a more steep angle to get every fuel from the line down downwards and uh, it just died and right now it cooled off really quick to uh, 300 around the burner side is 369 300 on this side stove pipe 156 Ambient temperature of the room has cooled down to uh, 55 and it's around 56 on this side. Uh, like I said this place has no insulation so all that heat is just going to get dissipated quick. Uh, and this amount of fuel we're talking about let me see roughly Roughly two and one quarter cups worth of uh, kerosene on this. There's my quick disconnect there. Worked pretty well. No leaks. Uh, it lasted. Let's see. I started at uh, 17:46 and it died at 20:12. So that's roughly half an hour. Half an hour of uh, heat output from this unit with uh, two and a quarter cups worth of. Uh, Water, uh, water. Yeah, right. I wish uh, kerosene. Uh, I tell you, there was a lot of babysitting as far as uh, making sure that the flame wasn't too high, and when the pressure of the fuel being used up was getting less because the fuel was getting used up pretty quick, or being used up in general, uh, I had to turn up the uh, valve there to get the same amount of drip that it had before to compensate. So that was a drag in a way, but. I had fun sitting in front of it. Couldn't, didn't have time really to to clean my weapons, but because uh, I was babysitting this thing. But uh, it did boil water. That was pretty good. Uh, on the side there, it started bulging and and uh, red hot there really quick, and it got up to at least a thousand because my meter pegged out at a thousand. Uh, but I I turned it down some more, and uh, it averaged around 850 around there. But actually, the average temperature of this whole unit was around 550. And it heated this place up from 50 degrees to uh, 70 degrees. So... Do you accept your existence on the planet with a certain peace of mind? Well, I accept my existence. Um, I don't accept...